thank you to Dr. Wilder for preparing this video. First, after anesthesia and isolation, use a carbide or diamond burr in a high-speed handpiece to create the initial punch cut where the caries is most involved. This is typically at the center of a groove or fissure. A carbide burr is generally preferred for amalgam because of the smoother walls it leaves behind. A good guideline is drop somewhere between half and full length of a 245 burr, which is just shy of 3 millimeters in length. This will put you just inside the dentin layer on an average occlusal surface. Extend mesial and distal and buccal and lingual along the natural grooves of the tooth to incorporate the extent of disease until you reach sound two structure at the perimeter of your preparation. Ensure that the walls are smooth and rounded. From an occlusal view, verify that your preparation walls converge towards the occlusal surface. Apply Gluma Desensitizer with a microbrush and rub it into the dentin for about 30 seconds. Then dry with a light air spray to evaporate the solvent. After loading a triturated mix of amalgam into the amalgam carrier, insert it into the base of your preparation. With the small end of the condenser first, compact the pliable mass of amalgam against the internal line angles of your preparation. Place new amalgam as needed and condense firmly and thoroughly to ensure that no voids are present. You can overfill the preparation with another batch of amalgam to ensure that there will be no shortage of amalgam and a consequent ledge between amalgam and natural tooth after condensation is completed. Use a high volume suction device to remove any excess. With a ball burnisher, you can pre-carve or smooth the surface while simultaneously condensing and removing excess. This helps to form a more cohesive mass while the amalgam is still in a softer stage. With a cleoid discoid instrument, you can begin to develop the anatomy of the final restoration. Always make sure that part of the instrument is on the tooth surface and part is on the amalgam. Move the working end of the instrument parallel to the cavo surface margin. The carving process should take place during the onset of the amalgam setting. At the end of setting, you can perform some post-carving burnishing to solidify and further highlight the primary anatomy of your restoration. Amalgam develops its final strength at around 24 hours, so ideally you want to wait this long to polish. You can confirm that the amalgam is fully hardened with the tip of an explorer. An abrasive greenstone, or round burr, is used to polish the surface. A rounded end is preferred to avoid gouging and scratching the material. Polishing the amalgam will help to create a smooth cavo surface margin, resist corrosion, reduce plaque retention, and potentially increase longevity of the restoration.
Here are some examples of other outline forms, depending on the tooth and carries distribution. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.